My name's Tom, this is The Enthusiasm Project, and today I want to show you how to use the new scribble feature in Tinkercad to create 3D prints like this based on your own drawings, lettering, handwriting, basically whatever you want. The scribble feature lets you draw whatever you want, and then you can turn that into a .stl file, which you can then slice and send to a 3D printer. So it opens up an entirely new world of what is possible with 3D printing. And I've really had fun trying to experiment with it over the last month or so. I've been using it a lot to do prints that involve handwriting because I've always been a really big fan of lettering and hand lettering. And so this is a print that I worked on to really figure it out for Cody Warner's No Small Creator community. I wanted to send him one just as a thank you for being super supportive to me and a bunch of people, especially with smaller channels. And so I thought this would be really neat, but to get this print to work, it took so many tries and so much failed filament. So that's what I wanted to help you guys with today. So hopefully you can avoid those problems and get to printing some really cool stuff really, really quickly. Now, I've actually been using the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil to do my drawings with the Scribble feature in Tinkercad. You can actually log into Tinkercad on the iPad Pro just through Safari. It's kind of clumsy. It's sort of hard to use. It's a little bit slow but the scribble feature with the Apple Pencil is really, really fun. You could also use a drawing tablet and of course, just your regular computer mouse. You don't need an iPad, you don't need an Apple Pencil, you don't need a drawing tablet. Whatever you use to input into your computer will work just fine. Once I have the drawing done on the iPad, I then go back into Tinkercad on the desktop where I can then merge everything together and figure out how the model is gonna come together. So even though you can use the scribble feature to draw and design pretty much anything you want, I'm focusing mostly on lettering just because that's what I like. For me, there's kind of a pro and con. As I've been working on my hand lettering over the years, I've always had trouble drawing in a straight line. So to fix that, I just sort of make my letters sort of bouncy up and down where they're kind of in a straight line, but it works out really, really well. It looks cool and then it saves me the pressure of having to be absolutely perfect. But the problem when I went to 3D print this is that the way I've always done 3D printed letters is to have the letters together and then just put a rectangular shape on the bottom to connect them and that's the base of the stand. It's a really cool like desktop or shelf item. But when your letters are all up and down, they don't all necessarily touch that. And so it actually ends up looking really, really cool because some of the letters are floating off of the base. And as long as everything is connected at some point, you're good to go. This was my first print where I really was trying to figure out how to use the feature. And then what I wanted to do was print my own slogan, which is work hard, be kind, have fun, because I really like this and I want this like on my desk or whatever at work. But there's a lot more lettering here. And so <laughs> you can kind of see, I don't know, I can kind of bend it like this, which is actually pretty neat. The work and B words are only connected to the very top of the H. This whole thing that says hard, kind, fun is only connected with the bottom of the F, but it all balances out and it works really fine. And if you look at the side of the piece, even though they're only connected at those one points, the fact that this is a relatively thick print means that they're actually still really firmly connected. They're not gonna pop off or anything. And so when you're doing things with lettering, you just need to make sure everything is connected. Otherwise, when you're done printing, you're just gonna end up with a bunch of separate letters all over your print bed, which might not be what you want. The scribble feature is really fun because you can just print anything, but it actually takes a little bit of finesse to make sure your printer can handle it since you're dealing with a lot of human imperfection. And the biggest problem I had when trying to start printing these was that the print just failed over and over again, even on the Prusa, which I never have any trouble with. The big issue on this print specifically was actually the hashtag. When the base went out towards the end of the hashtag, I think there were just too many small little parts and movements in there for the printer to handle and it kept messing up right here. So that's why I actually just shortened the base so that the hashtag is hanging off the end in the air by itself and the rest of the letters are all under the actual base piece. Ultimately what I had to do was recalibrate the printer several times until it really kind of nailed everything. Even though it was printing other things just fine, it was having a really hard time with these. And I think the reason is, at least with my handwriting, there's so many weird little points and imperfections and curves and holes and stuff that the printer was struggling with it. This is almost like if you've ever done one of the Benji prints, the little torture test tugboat to calibrate your printer. This is almost like another version of that because there's so many weird shapes and imperfections that the printer has to cover 
that in order for it to print well, it has to be calibrated really well. I'm currently running some of these prints on the Monoprice Maker Select Plus as well, and that seems to be handling it quite well. But just like with the Prusa, I had to calibrate and level out that printer a couple of times before I had it ready to the point where it would print successfully. Once I throw these designs into Tinkercad and hop back on the desktop, it's a pretty simple process of just making sure everything is connected. For the base, I just add in a square shape and then elongate it into a rectangle and adjust the thickness to whatever I want. I personally like to make it a little taller than the lettering, just because it makes it a bit more stable when it's standing on display somewhere, and I actually like the way that it looks. And so these are all designed to be printed flat, with no supports, no rafts, nothing like that. Just when you're done, you pop them off the print bed, and then you're good to go. Once I have everything together in Tinkercad, I just double check that every letter is connected to every other letter at some point, and then put on the elongated rectangle as the base, and then group the whole thing together and export it as a .stl file. Now one problem that I had when I first started printing the No Small Creator print is I think my infill setting was too high. I was making the print too dense and I think that was causing some print errors. So instead of doing 25 or 30% infill, which is where I started, I took it down to 10% and that seemed to make a positive difference and then also it's still really, really sturdy. On the Prusa, I haven't printed them with any rafts, but on the Monoprice Maker Select, I am printing them with rafts just to kind of see the difference. I'm using Cura to slice it for the Monoprice, and I'm using Slicer to slice it for the Prusa, but both slicers are giving good results. And then the only other thing really was to scale the print. The .stl file is pretty small on the print bed, and so I scaled it up on the Prusa. I think it was 250% before it fit almost the entire width of the print bed. The larger the print is, I think the easier it is to print because it makes all those small details a little bigger and a little easier for the printer. Pretty much any time you print, you should always monitor the printer at least for the first few layers to make sure everything is off to a good start, but I think that that is really critical with these prints to make sure everything starts going really well and then continuously monitor and check in on your printer to make sure that the prints are coming out the way that they should. So I hope this was helpful. The Scribble feature has been around for a few months. It still kind of seems like it's in its infancy. There's a few features I'd really like to see, like variable line lengths, but for a free program and for a really cool experimental feature, I really, really love it. So I put links to both of these prints on Thingiverse down in the description below if you want to download them and print them yourself. I'll also put a link to Tinkercad down below so you can sign up if you want. It's totally free and it's online based, which makes it really easy to jump back and forth between something like the iPad and your desktop. So that's pretty much it. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with the Scribble feature. So if you have any ideas or links or whatever you want to share with me, please drop them in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next time.